I have the very distinct pleasure of welcoming the highly esteemed landscape designer, Diana Balmori, principal of Balmori Associates, as one of our keynotes. She's recognized internationally for her creative interplay between landscape and architecture. And not surprisingly, Diana was named one of 2013's 100 Most Creative People in Business from Fast Company, at number three no less. I first met the lovely Diana in New York City in 2002 at the Earth Pledge Foundation. I was as inspired by her then as I am wowed by her now. We're very honored to have Diana speak with us. Enjoy. If you think about green roofs, and you think about how if you covered all the surfaces of roofs in a certain area, that it's a very, very small technological step. And it's rather modest in the cost of it. And yet it has enormous implications. We got started with green roofs at the very beginning, really, of the industry arriving to the United States, which was 2005. We were enormously interested in it, and so we thought, okay, it's simple enough at its minimum. It's the use of one particular plant, sedum, but does it do anything interesting? We decided to do a research piece on Long Island City. The Queensboro Bridge leads to Long Island City as the crossover and continues as a highway. That whole section as it goes through Long Island City was given the nickname Masma Alley because of the enormous amount of traffic coming and going at all times of day. So we thought, where better to test if in fact you could make all of this area green roof to have an effect that is so directly health-oriented. Long Island City has a series of low, very big roofs, and we counted all the big roofs and all the small roofs and the parking lots and decided to make them green. And the aggregate of all those greens made something as big as Prospect Park, Olmsted's Park in Brooklyn. And that seems like such an enormous civic effort to create a park like that and that you could create the benefits of that park is astounding that you can do that without purchasing land. We showed this study in Long Island City and we had the Suna Brothers of Silver Cup come up to us and say, well, what if you did it on our studios? And through that we did uh, 35,000 square foot, which was an enormous green roof, and it was the biggest green roof in New York for a long time. And then afterwards we had a modern furniture manufacturer, the Gratz Company, that asked us to do their roof on their industrial building. These projects were about three blocks apart. We did a study with an ecological organization measuring the effects on the atmosphere, on the water, on the temperatures. And we got textbook results on this and that they really performed in all the areas that we said they performed. In a green roof, you could have differentials of five degrees on a hot summer day. That's a lot of differential in temperature. It gives greater insulation to the roof, both for winter and for summer. So there's savings in heating and in air conditioning. But I think the most important effects are the ones that come at the large scale of the city, that it can retain water in moments of great rains, which then rush down you know, the pipes and go into the rivers and cause floods and erosion. It also cleans that water before it goes down. Cities have this particular problem of the heat island effect by which the temperatures rise on top of cities. And the aggregate of all of these roofs can definitely bring those temperatures down. But those gains are city gains at the infrastructure scale, but not for the individual 
owner except as a citizen of a large city. So there should be a return from the city to the individual who does this. And this is why I think that tax rebates is a simple way of sort of having that return. They have to build less infrastructure if everybody has a green roof. When you want to do anything at a city scale, you enter the political arena. We work in a field of design. We know a lot about technology, but we're not politicians. Our role really is to produce the ideas and to try to get a forum for them. I call the roofs a fifth facade. And in a city like New York, which has very tall buildings, that fifth facade is very visible. We're forever seeing roofs of other buildings. You just have to look out of my office to see these roofs in front of us. And if they were green roofs, they would be a much more pleasant sight than this vast landscape that we have of air conditioning units. In a very large master plan for a new city in Korea, we thought of introducing the idea of a landscape, taking the primordial organizing idea and organizing the architecture. This was to be a governmental city. The government would take half of the ministries in the city of Seoul to this new area called Sejong we decided to connect these ministries by a superstructure, which at the same time would be a green space. You could consider it a mega roof if you want, but what we wanted to do was to affect the architecture so that it was modified by this idea. So essentially the 20-some ministries were all individual buildings, but they all had to fit under this superstructure that went around and based on the form of the river and the mountains that were there in place, took a continuous form. The idea was that the series of buildings should all be kept low in order to give the image that government is accessible. And so this roof, not only is it reached by the different elevators that go to the top level, but it also has ramps that invite the public up. We also thought that there were some political implications in that all of the ministries would have a common space in which they could communicate and see each other. There is a library up there, for example. Some areas are wider in their paving and not all planted, so that events can take place. And at one end of this, there would be a cafeteria. So everybody goes you know, to this cafeteria at least once a day and crosses each other's path. It is a 4K walk, so you can get a walk in with your lunch. It has enormous integration, therefore, in the life of everybody that is in this complex. The result of this, I think, is that here landscape and architecture are totally balanced.